what is a planet? This sounds like a simple question that should have an obvious answer. But in reality, the word planet has been redefined several times since it was first coined centuries ago by the ancient Greeks. In those days, the planet was defined as any object that moved through the sky relative to the seemingly fixed background stars. This included the familiar objects, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, but also included the Sun and the Moon. Incidentally, this did not include the Earth, which was considered at the time to be fundamentally separate and unmoving. But eventually, as ancient astrology became modern astronomy, the word planet was redefined. The Sun and the Moon were dropped from the list, and Earth took its rightful place among its sibling worlds. Flash forward to the 21st century, and we have yet a new definition of the word planet. But unlike the previous redefinition that was profound and paradigm shifting, our recent redefinition is more subtle and nuanced. Unfortunately, it is these subtleties that have left many within the general populace confused as to what is a planet, what isn't a planet, and most importantly, why. As humans who are aware that we live on a planet, we like to think that we possess an innate understanding of what constitutes a planet. Perhaps this is why so many people get upset when they see the magnificent photos of Pluto that have been sent back from the New Horizons world, with its vast array of towering mountains, serpentine valleys, and sprawling plains, and then hear that it is, in fact, not a true planet. This leaves many objecting, it looks like a planet to me. And of course, they are not wrong. Pluto does look like a planet. But, so does this. And this. At a basic level, we conceptualize a planet as a place that one can visit and walk around on, as has been depicted in countless science fiction stories. However, humans have visited and walked on the moon, yet we don't call it a planet. And the gas giants of our solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, don't have surfaces to walk on, and yet they are considered planets. With our instinctual idea of a planet falling short, it is natural to instead try to define a planet based on one or more of its physical characteristics, such as its size, atmosphere, or even the presence of a moon. But then one finds that this relatively small world is a planet, and yet this larger world isn't. And that this planet has no atmosphere, while this has an atmosphere that is proportionally thicker than that of the Earth, and yet it too is not a planet. And that this planet has no moons, while this has five moons, and yet it is not, well, you get the idea. Considering all of this, perhaps it is not surprising that many find the subject confusing, and end up feeling as though the designation of a planet is somewhat arbitrary. But, believe it or not, there is a set of simple criteria that science uses to determine what is and isn't a planet. The International Astronomical Union, the body of several thousand scientists from around the world that set the classification, naming, and measurement standards for astronomical studies, use a detailed set of criteria to classify a planet. However, these can be somewhat confusing to many people, being filled with technical jargon like hydrostatic equilibrium and undefined non-scientific terms like neighborhood. But fortunately, it can all be boiled down to just two simple criteria, whether an object is spherical and where the object orbits. Whereas nearly everyone can agree that an object should be shaped like a ball to be considered a planet, it is that second criteria that separates the approximately 30 spherical objects known to exist in the solar system and sorts them into the three planetary classifications. If a spherical object orbits the sun in an orbit that is predominantly clear of debris, then it is classified as a planet. This is the case for Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. However, if a spherical object orbits the sun in an orbit that is shared by many other objects, such as within the asteroid belt, Kuiper belt, scattered disk, or the Oort cloud, then it is classified as a dwarf planet. This is the case for Ceres, Pluto, Eris, Haumea, Makemake, and a number of other spherical objects residing in the deep solar system. And finally, if a spherical object doesn't orbit the Sun, but rather orbits another planet or dwarf planet, then it is a major moon. This is the case for Earth's moon Luna, Jupiter's moons Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, 
and all the other spherical bodies that orbit planets and dwarf planets throughout the solar system. That's it. It's that simple. It makes no difference how large an object is, what kind of atmosphere or geological features it possesses, or whether it is orbited by moons or rings. It is classified simply by whether it is spherical and by where it currently orbits. In fact, this system of classification extends even beyond our solar system. Scientifically speaking, only objects that orbit our sun are classified as planets, dwarf planets, and moons. Objects orbiting other stars throughout the galaxy are collectively referred to as exoplanets, dwarf exoplanets, and exomoons, respectively. This is because they too orbit in a different location than those objects in our solar system that have been classified as planets. Ultimately, what an astronomical object is classified as isn't nearly as important as all the physical characteristics that make that object unique. However, classification will always be an important aspect of science. Grouping items into classes based on their similarities is the first step toward studying and eventually understanding those items and how they relate to one another. Our current planetary classification system isn't perfect, but that's okay. For now, it is sufficient to help us advance our understanding of our solar system and how it relates to the universe at large. And one day, in the distant future, we will undoubtedly redefine the word planet yet again. Things will change and it will be a difficult transition for me. But, nonetheless, it will be a day to be celebrated, for it will mean that we have attained an even deeper understanding of the physics involved and be even better prepared to answer the question, what is a planet?